Welcome back guys. Today we're in Gilroy and we're going to feature Yi's uh, newly finished shovel head. You guys probably recognize this one uh, from the recent video. We rolled together, get some coffee. How do you feel, dude? Your first chopper pretty much, huh? Yep. What year is it? Uh, this one's a 1979. I think it was an FX EF, the guy told me. But um, when I got it, it was converted to a wide glide. That's the donor over there. So whoever had it, I converted everything to a fxwg and uh i pretty much just took the motor took the transmission and everything else is brand new right pretty much. well no i wouldn't say brand new not everything else is new because some of the stuff i got from swap meets but it's new to me what frame is this i think it's a palco frame i don't know i just liked it because it kind of looked like a jammer frame i think of had it been like kicked up another two inches of would look really cool but yeah the gussets and everything are pretty dope so how is it with the real tire like this you know honestly i can't tell the difference um yeah it's it's flat on this side of it but when you're riding and when i'm turning and stuff i can't really tell it's got kind of like a concave too but <laughs> but yeah when you ride with it you can't really tell right yeah. like the rear the rear is flat i can't tell i think like once once you're on a turn, it kind of flexes a little bit, so you don't really notice that anyways. Yeah. And it's not like you pump it super hard so it's, you know, stiff or anything. It still has some flex. What uh, rear wheel is this? Uh, I'm told that these are RC, like some old school RC component wheels. They were like powder coated black when I got them, but, or powder coated cloth black, and I kind of wanted it to be have that flat look, so I had it redone because a little bit was kind of messed up. But uh, yeah, these are RC component wheels. I think they are called Outlaws. I tried to find them online, couldn't find them, and um, went off of whatever dude told me. They're Outlaw wheels. Is it the same one for the front too? Same one in the front, but it's 21 in the front. You bought it as a set then, huh? I bought it as a set, um, took it apart, had them powder coated, and then in order to fit it up with these uh, on with these mullins, I had to have them shaved. So brought it to this machinist dude, and then he he ended up cutting the hubs down in order for it to fit. Because in these lowbrow, these lowbrow um, lowers lowers are tapered, and then he had to make some work to make it fit. Damn, dude, how many millimeters is that? <laughs> it's pretty close, dude. Yeah, that's fucking tight, dude. You can get a credit card in there. <laughs> that's a skinny boy right there. Looks cool, though, is it? Yeah. They're, they're minus twos on the lowers. Like, the stock lower will sit up here, so that way you can clear more tire. But then because it's tapered at this spot right here, yeah. it tapers down. And then it's minus two, it lands right where the tire is. But it looks kind of cool from, like, from the side. If you yeah. look from the side, it looks pretty dope. Yeah, that's pretty sick. It lands right where the tire is. How long did it take you to build this bike? Fucking year and a half, dude. It took way too long. I think I ran into a lot of issues, like getting stuff to fit up because I bought a bunch of different things. And then this came with a 504 um, transmission that I wanted initially to go kick only. That would have saved me a lot of time if I can go kick only because I wouldn't have to, you know, try to fit a starter in there and everything. Yeah. Um, I had an open belt already, but all that stuff wouldn't fit on this frame. Wouldn't fit with the oil bag, had to have the oil bag cut. Had notched on. Notched the oil bag so it could fit over this Tech Cycles uh, primary, which looks really cool. I like I like how they, they did this. Yeah, it looks this really is, clean. The mids you're running, is, uh, is it main drive? Yeah, those are, I think his name is Corey, that makes them for main drive. I don't know if he makes them anymore. He was making a ton of them, and I think he stopped for a while. I think Voog had gotten like one of the last sets that he had ever made. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't think he's making them anymore. And then these pegs were from him too, but normally the pegs come out to here. And I, when I bought them from him, I was like, hey man, can you shorten them up? So he, I think he cut off like three or four ribs and then just sanded out the ends, yeah. which looks really cool. Cause I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't have that big of a phone. I don't need it to stick out that far. Super narrow. Air cleaner is nice. It's a mini SNS, huh? No, it's actually a regular SNS. Really? And it's chopped. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's a regular SNS, so. Fuck. 
well i have one but it's in, it's in storage right now it's yeah, in the back the, the but it's big. it's big dude it's huge and it's it normally sticks out further too so these were chopped down and then it sits in closer to the motor and then you add this uh little guard on there so you know birds or rocks going in there yeah because the stock one dude it covers the whole freaking motor Dude, with the stock one, my leg would be like way out. Cause when I was riding it with that on on the donor bike, man, it stuck out way further. When you bought this bike, it was stock, right? Did you enjoy a stock or did you just fucking chop it right away? I so when I got the bike, um, the dude I bought it from, the homie Red, he said that he had just done the top end, and I was still gonna break it in. So I rode it for 500 miles, changed the oil. Rode a little bit more, and then I was like, all right, I'm ready to pull the motor. So I pulled, dumped all the oil out, drained all the fluids, yanked the motor out, and then swapped it over to this frame. But, I mean, that, that bike was cool, too. It's just, dude, I could barely reach the pegs. Like, like, dude, he only had forwards on there, and then dude's pretty tall. He has long-ass legs. I could barely reach the pegs. He had, like, huge ape bars on there. I'm talking about, like, they were huge, man. The, the bars were, like, out here. Yeah, the bars are huge, and I had to freaking um, open up his uh, the risers and pull the bars back because I couldn't reach them. A lot of this bike, I think, is going to go onto that new shovel. You just bought a new project. He didn't want to join the Evil Bros. So he got another shovel. Primaries, Tech Cycles. Uh, yeah, that's their clutch hub and pulley and belt. Uh, the clutch is from Rivera. I think all of us run those now. It's easy to set up. Paint, tank built out in Hayward, did the paint. Um, he's actually the guy that freaking saved you last time you were down here. Yeah. Yeah, so when, when Sun came down here last time to Gilroy to, before EDR, he broke down and then Tank actually saved him, put him on, put your bike on his truck, right? Yeah, yeah, same guy. Yeah, so small world. And then freaking somehow me and him linked up through Tony and then I found out that he was doing paint, so I asked him to paint the bike because he does some pretty cool stuff. He does like a bunch of art stuff too. He did that um, that skull thing on my on, on the wall over there. I don't know if you can see it. You won this one, right? In a raffle? Yeah, he had a raffle for it. He makes some really cool ones, dude. He paints them and everything. What made you go with purple? My wife's favorite color. Damn. But purple looks pretty cool, man. I always like like those, those hot rod looks and. You know, there's like this hot rod purple that I've always pretty jock. This thing came out dope though. He, it, I don't know if you can see it now, but yeah, he did like some kind of like water droplet thing in there. It's hard to see right now, but when it's sunny, you can tell it. How big is the tank, dude? Is it 2.1? I think it was normally a 2.1, but <clears throat> there's a guy named RKB that built this tank. So it's dished on this side, dished. Dished on the top, he dished the two sides in. Um, the bottom's flattened out. It actually, the tunnel actually sits all the way up here. Like it was, the tank was supposed to sit all the way down. But I wanted that Frisco look, so welded in this piece up here. So in here is actually a fake tunnel. There's there's nothing in the middle right here. Prism petcock. Yeah, these are super clean, dude. I love how they look. I had like, I bought a couple other Petcocks, but they were like hitting stuff yeah. and I don't know, it was kind of big and bulky. Unless you got money and freaking buy those Pingles. Some of those Pingles are really nice, but this is like the most minimal, looks yeah. really clean. It's easy to use. At first I was scared because then some people told me that they leak, but man, I haven't had a problem with this thing. Seats TC Bros, oil bags, the gas box oil bag. Um, the sissy bar. Oh, those pipes are a gas box too. Did you cut these yourself or it came like that? Yeah, they came, uh, no, they came straight. So it was just a straight shot that went down and then I was just sitting there. I was like, man, I was gonna chop the pipe, like make them really short. Yeah. And then I started messing around with the tip and then I came up with this on one of them. And I was like, you know what? Let me see if I could transfer it to the other one. So I ended up transferring it, put it on the bike and it looked pretty cool. Yeah. Just stuck with it, man. And I'm, I'm glad that it doesn't, uh, I didn't chop them because when you chop them, the bike gets super loud. Yeah. This one's not that loud. I can, I, <laughs> yeah, I could hear my freaking, you know, Senna and stuff if I wear that helmet. Yeah. It's not bad. You can listen to music. How big is the motor? 
Is that 11 and a half? I think that's 11 and a half. 11 and a half caliper mounts from Lowbrow. And then the caliper itself, I found out a swap meet for 40 bucks. Damn. But it was kind of beat up. I had to rebuild it. Old stuff tranny plate, dude. If you don't have one, get one. That thing's legit. Don't get those freaking Chinese knockoff little <laughs> nut things, man. I mean, I might still use them, but if I have a chance to get one of these, dude, they're worth the money, man. Your transmission ain't going nowhere. It's uh, adjustable too, huh? Yeah, so it has this nut right here. You, just, you twist this with a 12 point, yeah. and then it'll, it'll slide your, um, your transmission back and forth. I didn't have that before and freaking uh, had the belt too tight, threw out a, the main seal, or I think it's the fourth or fifth gear seal, main seal or whatever, yeah. on, on the transmission. That thing was leaking like crazy. I fixed that, threw the transmission plate on from old stuff, and it's fine now. It hasn't leaked yet. The Sissy Bar, where'd you, where'd you say you got it from? I uh, went to a swap meet. It was a Turlock's, I think. Swap meet in Turlock, and then it was, but it didn't have any tabs on it. Like there was no bungs. It was, it was just a piece of metal, and it looked, it looked kind of shitty. Cause the guy was like, "Hey man, it's a stainless one," and he's on, uh, "You could have it for ten bucks." I was like, <laughs> "What? All right." But I, I wasn't even sure if it was stainless. It's not like you know, it's not like I'm carrying a magnet around yeah. trying to test it, you know. So I brought it home, and then I've kind of polished it up, and it happened to be stainless. So I bought some stainless bungs, stainless steel, and then I cut some tabs out, welded those on. And it look, came out all right. Is it pretty bright? It well, it's it's bright enough at night, but yeah, I, bought, I bought a smoke lens, so it's not the brightest thing. It's enough to see me, I guess. Yeah, that's clean though. Yeah, I added this in so I can charge up. Having to enter gravity. I still run all the stock like the old big block um, circuit breakers. So instead of mounting, it's a lot of people mount them right here. Well, of course I don't have that much room. So I use a, like an old tactical, I don't know, one of these old tactical waterproof boxes and I mounted them all in there, ran wired through it. Let me see your, uh, your seat mount, dude. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of similar to what um, Nick did. Yeah. Yeah. But normally on the shovel heads, they have like a hole right here in the frame. Mm -hmm. This one didn't have anything. So I ended up taking like some one inch stock, cutting it off and then just welding onto a plate, mounting onto the seat. And then for this, I took a piece of metal, took an old like axle spacer. Oh, so this was added to the frame. Yeah, I added this to the frame. So I, it, was just, it was just a piece of metal. I drilled a hole through it put an axle spacer on the other side, welded that to it, so that way it has something to sit through. I think this, this seat's gonna be just temporary. I'm probably gonna have another seat because right now I don't have anything bolted in. I'm waiting to see if I go with another seat, that way I can drill here. Yeah. But until then, I'm just leaving it this way. f and pancake light, I think it's like a three and a half or something. And then Tank, who did my uh, paint, he does some machine work too. Dude, dude made like these cool, pretty sick spacers. Cause it, I had mounted it onto just the Mullins, but it looked like it was super low. So I had a yeah. huge gap right here. And I was like, you know what? I like how Luck MC does his, where his headlight kind of sinks into the frame yeah. or sinks into the forks, you know, from the side. Yeah. Otherwise it sticks out a lot, right? So uh, I measured that, asked Tank to whip me up some spacers. He ended up doing the spacer for the headlight. And then he, had, he made some spacers for my, um, for my exhaust too, before it mounts to the frame. So he made these pieces. What bars are those? Silverback Moto bars. He makes some like sick bends, dude. It's stainless, huh? This is stainless. I, I drilled it down here, then added a freaking shitty eBay, eBay internal throttle. How was it? Was it hard to install? I mean, I wouldn't say it's hard to install. It was a, you know what it was pain in the ass is the eBay throttle, the, the outside diameter of it, doesn't fit right into this tube. So it took me forever to grind the inside of this tube and make it so it's not, you know, flopping around. Yeah. I spent like three days trying to drill this thing because it's stainless so hard, right? Yeah. And instead of screwing it up, I just took it to the machinist and he did it by hand too. He's like, I don't have anything to clamp it or jig to clamp these bars in because, you know, look at the shape, right? So he had it, ended up doing it by hand, but he did way better job than I did. He ended up like 
milling it out and then I, I put it in. Tank helped me out with the, um, I didn't know you can solder like, you know, the ends of the, the cable. Yeah. Cause the cable just feeds through and then there's like no fuel or whatever that goes on the end of it. It's just, it just normally just clamps down straight onto the cable. And I was like, man, I kept messing up the cables. He told me just go ahead and use some freaking solder. He did that for me. That was pretty cool. Well, but now it- Would, would you want to use it again? <laughs> you know what? I think- Is it worth the trouble? It, it looks cool. I wouldn't say that it's something that I wouldn't use. Like if I'm going on a long trip, I'm not gonna take these bars with me. Not only are they, you know, not the most comfortable things, but- You can't really service on the road, right? You could, it's just, it, this thing takes three different Allen sizes just to open it up, dude. It takes three different Allens to open it up. And then you gotta have to bring solder with you. You're gonna have to bring a bunch of stuff just to, just to work on this one thing, dude. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't think it's worth it, man. Like it looks cool for, for ripping around town, but if you're trying to go far, don't don't get an internal throttle. This one's from Elite. I think it's Elite Mototech. Does it help? I think it helps a little bit because this this clutch is like super stiff, dude. I don't know if it's the clutch. Even with, with the stock clutch, this the throw in it was just always super stiff when I had the stock one. These are supposed to help a little bit, but I don't know. I thought it looked kind of cool with the uh the stainless. Yeah. And nice. and it's short, you know? Yeah. I have it on my sports dirt and stuff. The levers are real nice, so. Oil filter, uh, who makes that? Raw height cycles? Yeah, I was going for like this whole fin look. Cause I had fins here, you know, fins, fin. Well, that's not fit, but you, you get the idea. And then I, did, I couldn't find a place that, to put the oil filter that didn't look stupid. Some people have, you know, All over the they chode in the front and fucking, you know, some on the side. But this looks super clean. I have just enough room to freaking yeah, slide it's it super out. Tight right there, this came with the mid pegs, but this piece here, it wasn't welded because you kind of have to put it together and then figure out where your brake reservoir needs to be and then weld it. So we did that back home, at home, but I had to add some metal to it because it, it sat too far in. I needed it to come out some more. What would you say is the most challenging part about this build? Dude, man, I, I think like learning about shovel heads in general was like, it was a lot of reading, seeing what fits, what years did what. I mean, I had never taken a shovel head out, you know, apart before. Uh, I had to watch a ton of videos. I mean, a lot of YouTube. And then of course, asking like the homies to explain stuff to me. I, and yeah, getting stuff to fit was the, the hardest thing, dude. This, this bike, I like, with the transmission, with the primary, everything didn't work together. And then trying to figure out what I can do to make it work or talking to people that could help me make it work was probably the hardest thing. Yeah, it's a lot of trial and error pretty much, huh? Yeah, dude, like, you know, if, if had this had this transmission been the stock, you know, ratchet top or whatever, yeah. or even or even the Calpie, right? I think it would have been a lot easier because everything would have fit. But now you got like stuff from a five speed, stuff from a four speed, and then you're trying to mate everything together and sometimes it just doesn't fit. And then, you know, when you call the guy, like he's gonna ask, or you call the company to ask and ask them to, for a part, what do you tell them? Like, oh yeah, they got a five and a four, but they don't really make those. So do they give you a five or do they give you a four? Like, yeah. and they ask you what year is it, what? Exactly, what? but you're like, dude, I don't have, my shit's not stock. It turned out nice, man, for first chopper yeah i'm pretty happy with it dude i mean now it just rides a lot better it was really rough when we took it to the tricky ride yeah. it was it wasn't riding that well i mean it looked cool but it wasn't riding that well i have race techs in here because i had originally had bought some race techs internals for that bike but i ended up going only into yeah. that bike but now it fucking it rebounds good dude before it would rebound like i would push down and it would just come up super slow sure. Like super slow. How many times did you change the uh, fork wheel? Dude, I did, not including the install, four other oil changes before I found an oil that gave me the right rebound. Cause I went off of what Race Tech told me. I even called them like, hey, I have 39 millimeter forks because these go on a Sportster, right? And then I'm like, but I have it on a chopper, shovel head, so they don't know how, how much the bike weighs. It's hard for them to even like calculate, you know, what weight to give me. But they're like, dude, just go with what we recommended. And they're, in their book, it says to use 15 weight. I tried 15, I tried 20, I tried, 
he, they're like, no, try 15 from another company. So instead of using the Maxima stuff, I went to Bell Ray, tried that. And then I finally went to a 10. And now I think the 10 is like right where I want it to be. I mean, I, can, I think if I went seven, it would be, be fine too. But 10 is pretty good, dude. I think once I get some more miles in it, that one will wear in. But right now, it, gets, it doesn't jar me every time I hit a bump. I'm still not used to riding with just the rear brake, dude. It sucks. Like, I'm so used to having, a, there'll be times where I just reach for the front yeah. brake and, you know, there's nothing there. Yeah, there's no way for you to fit a front brake in the front <laughs> with that narrow. No, dude. No way. Yeah. Even with a drum, you can't even fit it. Yeah. Want to hear it?
Just like Vietnam. <laughs> A little lunch break. Food channel now, dog. <laughs> So the last time I was here was uh, 2021, uh, before EDR. Right and, before EDR, yeah. like a week before EDR. Yep, and the garage looked nothing like this. So in two years, he pretty much filled a lot of shit up, which is sick. There's a fridge right here, a Tesla fridge. <laughs> Let's open it up. Just kidding. Oh yeah, dude, looks good, man. Let's start with the tools over here. Tools? Did you have the the TIG machine yet before? I don't know. I don't know if you if the TIG was here before when you came. I think it was. But this one's a motomatic. This TIG MIG you could stick. I don't know how to stick. Never mess with that thing. <laughs> but uh, does some MIGging. Does some TIGging on the, uh, the chopper. Dang, this car is nice, man. Dude, Amazon, bro. For real? I think so. Wow. Much. Isn't that from Amazon? I don't know. I got it's the... It's either from Amazon or from that Northwestern or North... Oh, Northern Tool? Northern Tool. Yeah. I from one of them. I, I don't know. I got it when it was on sale. Looks way better than my Harbor Freight one. <laughs> yeah, this is clutch too. The... Oh, yeah, the wedding table? That's yeah. from the Northern this, Tool. This one's from Northern Tool for yeah. sure. This one's from Northern Tool. This is where I got the, the idea from, the swag machine. The swag table? Yeah, the swag table. Dude, the swag table is legit, bro. I think that's like... I use this probably the most out of everything in this garage. This swag table. That and freaking grinders. Yeah. But you can cut almost anything with this, dude. I cut yeah. plastic, you can cut wood. And it's so fast. Yeah. It's hella fast. It's easy to set up. But what I do need is that throttle thing that you have. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. true. You should order that's a new feature. Yeah, man. I need <laughs> one of those. Otherwise, right now, yeah, I have to do it the getaway where I, I use a piece of uh, Velcro to hold the... Uh the trigger down but still work it's all right it'd be nice if it was the who's it casa that has the one with the foot switch oh yeah yeah the foot switch would be cool this is dude, this is smart freight. i need to get this gun dude carbon freight dude because that we're not have to um, what freaking, are these right yeah one of those yeah these things suck i was using this for the longest time and then I said, screw it. I saw this thing at Harbor Freight for three bucks. I bought it. Dude, totally worth it, man. Yeah. So, so much easier to use. All right, that's going to be added to the list. Ooh, the good guys, car show. It's actually this weekend. <laughs> good guys this weekend. Are you on or what? I'm going to try to go. Probably ride the bike out there. Which one, the shovel or the sporty? Probably take the shovel out there. Damn. It's only like 40 miles from here. 40, 50 miles. So over here is uh, his newest project. He didn't want to join the Evil Bros. No, I was trying to. <laughs> I was trying to join the Evil Bros, but then this I saw this on behind, and 
it happened to be for pretty cheap, so. Yeah, we actually picked it up today, right before this video, so. Yeah, we just picked it up. Yeah, I think he definitely pulled this, because then this, this is the, the stop tab. No, right? No. So they had to weld this in. Yeah. Yeah, so this definitely has like some upstretch. Yeah, upstretch. it looks hella long, dude. <laughs> I don't know, man. That'd I'm be a cool too, project. Not too wild about the frame. I think we're going to have to do something about this frame. Yeah, if you guys have a frame for sale, uh, let him know. Yeah, if you have a frame for sale, let it's me preferably know. Preferably stock or what? Or just one hardtail? Either or. If you have a hardtail, I'll take a hardtail. If you have a stock one, I'll take a stock one. But. The paint job's pretty nice though, dude. Yeah. It's like blue flames. Yeah, I mean, dude, somebody like cut this. <laughs> like, you, the tanks were all over the floor. Inner and outer primary is gone. He had a starter on here at one point. It's got one shock on it. <laughs> Custom. And then for some reason they went belt driven. Look how close this is, dude, to the swing arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they went they went to a belt at one point. I don't know where the belt is. And then somebody went through and decided to hack the harness a little bit. But we'll, yeah. You'll figure it out. I'll figure that out. Yeah, it should be a fun project. I'm gonna have to take all this freaking black paint off of this thing. I think somebody painted this ugly cow pie black too. <laughs> that thing is so ugly though, huh? Cow pie? Like the cow pie transmission? They do not look like good at all. <laughs> well, to you it might be ugly, but to other people it might be beautiful, you know? Yeah, but that looks better over there. See that? I've been saving this one. <laughs> This is that will go into something later on. We'll go to uh, a keeper, huh? A keeper uh, bike? There's a bike that I'm going to keep that I'm going to turn that up. So that, yeah, this one's pretty cool. I mean, it has SNS, SNS jugs, SNS oil pump that I can tell, um, electronics ignition. I think this is a Dynatec module out here. PM brake, GMA brake. If that front end fits on here and it doesn't drag the frame, I might just do that and just get rid of this printer. Somebody's gonna want this long boy. This is the workbench area. Shit, I thought my girl was clean. This guy's on a whole nother level. Got a small case of OCD. Huh? Yeah. Got Actually, it's major case OCD, dog. It's gotta be clean, dude. <laughs> when you don't have a notebook, you just write onto your bench. Yep. I forgot where I saw that from. I saw somebody do it on YouTube. He just writes all <laughs> over his bench. And then he's like, well, I was, I was like, dude, why is he writing all over his bench? But then then I realized you could just use acetone to just wipe it all off. Yeah. So that's what I do. I just write everything that I need to do onto that workbench. And then I mark them off or I wipe it off with some acetone. How long have you been in this house for? Three years? Yeah, we're coming up on three years. We're two and a half years in. When we came into this house, this whole garage was just empty. It was just white walls. There was nothing in here besides a white fridge. And then, I don't know, slowly I just started collecting stuff and putting stuff on the wall. Making some stuff to put on the wall. Got a pretty cool sign right there. Amazon buy, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think I found that on Amazon. Stuff, some stuff from Amazon, some stuff from Craigslist, like Budweiser signs, all these beer signs are from Craigslist. Yeah. The big ass stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the fuck they, they, they found that thing, dude, but some dude had it and he's just down the street from me in Gilroy. I was like, dude, I gotta have this stop sign. It's freaking huge. Yeah, that's freaking huge. How about that stoplight, dude? Does it work? Stoplight works. Let's see. I don't plug it in because then. It's just too bright. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, this was from San Jose. I think I, we talked about this. Yeah. Yeah, this was from San Jose. It was, it was a broken light and then it was tore up on the bottom. <laughs> so I just put some more metal on the bottom, covered it up, and then the lights worked. Some more stuff. Man, I wish I got a sink in my garage. It's a game changer, man. Add one. I can't, there's no drain. That's a good idea, dude. 
Yeah, I had all this open space, and then I have a bunch of these bins. It's kind of messy right now because I haven't cleaned it. But I just built this out of some two by fours, piece of plywood, hung it up, and then used some cable to um, hold up this end of it, so that way I don't have to put a post. And then I had a bunch of reels of wire, yeah. so I did that. What's the story behind the Corvette, dude? Some dude had a Rex Corvette, and he was selling it. But I didn't want the Corvette. I just wanted the bumper, so I went there with the hacksaw and I, <laughs> and I cut the bump, the rear end off of it, took it home, fixed it a little bit because it was kind of broken. It came with the license plate too. No, that's oh, that's, I was gonna say it's an old, old plate from my old car and don't use, so I just put it up there. Are you a Bengals fan or something, dude? Hell yeah! You got Bengals with me. Oh, this is sick. Does it really work? I it. Oh, yeah. shit, dude. Swap me fine, dude. I thought I was swap me. I just had to sit around. I was like, man, what am I going to do with it? So when I was doing this, the garage switch, I was like, oh, well, it's only two wires. I was like, well, I wonder if this thing will work. And then I hooked it up, pushed the button, and freaking closed the garage. So I was like, all right, well, this is where it's going to live. That sounds sick, dude. Super original. Oh, this is the thing that you want, right? From Tank Built? Yeah, that's a Tank Built art. He cut that out of like some palm fronds or something. Yeah. Like some kind of palm thing. Damn. He does a bunch of them, dude. He's, he's hella creative, dude. Yeah. When he paints them, they look freaking sick, too. But yeah, gotta have a fridge in the garage. It's a must. This is a, it's a bobber. Electric bobber, huh? This thing's cool. I wish they, they have two sizes. They have one that's a bigger one, but I don't know. I Did you put that, that seat on? The Bitwell? No, nah, it, it comes with, they the sell hell? it with this, the, the Bitwell seat. What the, the guy, hell? Yeah, whoever makes this, they sell it with the Bitwell seat. But that's they fun. have a bigger version. This is like the smaller version of the bike. That's pretty well, cool. I, I don't know. I got it for hella cheap. Some dude was moving and he didn't <laughs> want it anymore. So I freaking bought it off of Craigslist. That one's gonna pay like, dude, yeah. I think they're like 2,000 bucks, dude. Really? Yeah, they're oh, like shit. two grand for one. Yeah, dude just didn't want one and want it anymore. Yeah, clean garage is a productive garage. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm running out of space. <laughs> You're running out of wall space because you keep buying stuff. Yeah. Buying too much I mean, even like physical space because the two cars parked inside. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we only park one car in there. Park my truck outside. But, I don't know. Once I do start doing a car build, I might have to get rid of this lift or move, move, the, over, bike huh? some, move the bike somewhere and move the lift up. Ward. Hi, yeah. dude. Thanks for uh, showing us your bike and your garage. Thank All you, right. later. Have fun. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.